Hey guys, what's up? It's Melanie. Today we're going to give this old hutch a new look. This is a customer of mine and she came to me with a specific look that she wanted. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is get that um, trim out of the glass doors there. That way we don't have to mess around with taping it off. They were going to be using our central pneumatic HVLP gravity fed spray gun from Harbor Freight. We're going to be using DIY's Prairie Gray. This paint is very thick, so we're going to need to thin it. I'm going to go ahead and pour it in here, add some water, stir it up. I'm going to strain it with my strainer and pour it into my sprayer. I'll get a little bit more into detail with that in my next video. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to see quick little checkup on the little baby toads that I have. They were tadpoles and now they're toads. Finally figured out how to feed them. I caught ants from. It was brilliant. <laughs> we're going to give this whole thing a base coat of prairie gray. As you can see, spraying goes a lot faster. It's a lot easier to get up inside and round and round on things like this. It just really makes life easier sometimes. Alright, now that we have a full base coat on here, let's go ahead and do some blending. We're going to use crinoline. I'm going to use the tiniest amount, my Klingon brush here, and of course my magic misting bottle. That is going to allow me to blend. It's a day later, so my paint is completely dry. So giving it a nice spritz is going to help those two colors to blend together. So I'm going to be going back and forth between crinoline and my prairie gray. That's going to allow my blending to be more fluid and I can tone it down if I get too much crinoline. Adding more prairie gray tones it back down for me. I'm just going to keep working this back and forth and up and down. I want the blending to be very smooth and fluid. I'm really trying to avoid any harsh lines. Giving my brush a little bit of a spritz, giving the piece a little bit of a spritz. This is helping my base color and my crinolines blend together. Larger areas are always a bit more challenging. We need to really keep that damp so that we can really move that paint around. Okay, for this piece, I decided I would wet distress. I'm just going to get my towel a little bit damp, take my finger and just rub along the edges lightly. This way, I can bring out the natural oomph of this piece all around those corners, give it a little bit more definition and def defining characteristics. It's a really easy way to distress DIY paint. Let's get out our DIY clear wax and um, get this guy all sealed up. Get 
The waxing always looks super crazy at first. Do not fear, it'll dry solid. Just looks nuts at first. All right, my wax is almost dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and dip into my white wax and let's just, again, do some detailing here. Let's bring out a little bit more of the pieces, natural stuff, and um, just make it that much cooler. Okay, so I'm going to wipe that back, and as you can see, it's not wiping back very well. Well, do not fear, we have our clear wax handy, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab that clear wax and I'm gonna use it kind of like an eraser and get off a lot of that white that was just, uh, yeah, way too much. I'm gonna use the white wax on the legs, really pushing it down into those deep sp spaces. That way when I wipe it back, it really brings out those uh, nice curvy carvings on those legs. And let's get that original hardware back on this piece. Staging can be challenging. I always like to use stuff that I just have around the house and do my best so here we go guys this one is all done i think it turned out fabulous and my customer loved it that's the most important part thank you guys for watching don't forget you can find all this stuff on my website at windmill vintage designs and remember only you can make it happen see you next time